The topic of this episode of Qi Life is going to be Qigong skeptics and superstition. I was having a conversation the other day with someone who had recently completed one of the Long White Cloud Qigong instructor certification programs. And she asked me about how to deal with someone coming along to a Qigong class who is skeptical about Qigong. And look, this is a concern, you know, particularly maybe new teachers may commonly have. And, you know, it's something that comes up from time to time. So I thought I would share with you uh, some of what I talked to her about, as well as maybe adding a few other thoughts of mine around this topic of people who are ch skeptical about Qigong. So, I guess the first thing, it's helpful to distinguish between someone being skeptical or being prejudiced, because there's quite a difference between those uh, states of mind. That's something I'll come back to and talk a little bit more about later. But to begin with, someone who's skeptical, skepticism, I think, can be really healthy in many ways. Um, skepticism means that you don't immediately just take as correct or assume as correct whatever's presented to you. You want to probe it, you want to try to find out more about it to establish whether it's accurate, whether it's correct or not. I think that's often a really healthy uh, attitude or state of mind to have for many things in life, Qigong included. And in my experience, often skeptical students can be some of the best students because they will ask really good questions and they will really try to find out how things actually work to truly understand the Qigong practices and in doing so they discover a lot more about it and they understand it at a much deeper level and yeah they get a lot of benefit from it and uh, I really really enjoy teaching students like that who really want to understand the practice even if that means um, there's an element of skepticism or disbelief to begin with. Now, one of the issues with people who are skeptical is often they they have um, they have an, a, a, I guess a belief or a, a framework of thinking that maybe qigong is superstitious rather than based on well on fact on real and tangible effects and results. And you know that's entirely understandable because unfortunately there are lots of different Qigong teachers from different traditions in the past and even now who have presented Qigong in a very mystical kind of a way where they have um, essentially turned it into well presented it as kind of like a some kind of magic or as a as a pseudo religion even of some sort and that that ties in with a recent um article i'll put a link to that uh in the in the area below here uh, about whether qigong is a religion or not um had some interesting comments from people about that and and again based on sort of preconceptions that people have about this topic and unfortunately there are some good reasons for people to have some of these preconceptions. But if that's not the approach that you take to Qigong, if you take a practical approach to Qigong, then we're not really making any extraordinary claims and certainly in teaching the basics of qigong you know the idea that our mind affects our body hopefully that's not too extraordinary in these days and age uh, and and you know people from the scientific community um, understand that quite readily people from the western medical community understand that quite readily the idea that moving in different ways can maybe stimulate and release 
different tensions in your body and that may have an effect on your blood flow, your nerve activity and so on, which then affects your energy. That's not really an extraordinary claim either. The idea that our emotions are connected to aspects of our body's functions, the way our organs function, the way we release hormones, that's not really an extraordinary claim either. What is interesting in Qigong is the way all of these come together in quite a rich and sophisticated way. And it really creates a framework for understanding these concepts more deeply and in a way that, that makes sense. So that these different things that we understand from Western science um, about the, you know, these individual pieces of information we bring together into a collective picture of how our mind and our body and our energy works. And that's fascinating, it's really beneficial. Um, I have quite a few students from medical backgrounds, scientific backgrounds and so on who as they go through the courses, as they learn things about the practices, they will say, oh, we actually do that in you know, this branch of medicine or within this area of science, you know, and they find it, you know, this is information they're already familiar with, but they find it fascinating how it comes together within Qigong practice. So if we understand that we're not making extraordinary claims, then we can be quite comfortable and relaxed in explaining things to someone who is a healthy skeptic someone who is honestly just evaluating but not just taking something at face value wanting to dig a little deeper. Where this maybe gets a little bit more challenging is with people who they aren't actually what I would call truly skeptical they are really they're just prejudiced um, and and this happens a lot particularly in things like social media where you can post something and who knows who's going to see it and and people generally aren't going to or often don't spend the time to do any in-depth analysis you know before they react or respond to something and people might you know they'll read the headline and they won't even uh yeah they won't even read the article or watch the video so they don't even know what it is that they're responding to but they'll see a label or a word that they have preconceived ideas about and they'll just respond to that and and they'll think oh this you know this doesn't quite fit within the box of what i already think so therefore it must be whatever um and i don't know that there's really a lot you can do about that um people have their preconceptions and if they're not open-minded um, well, you, you know, arguing with them generally isn't going to achieve a good result. So, um, yeah, not, not much I think you can do about that other than I think, you know, particularly with Qigong, for example, that's, that's really the topic of this video, as more and more people understand Qigong well and understand it not as a superstition or as a pseudo religion or anything like that then that awareness gradually filters out into the community and th those attitudes as they become more more broadly accepted can cause other people to maybe uh, open themselves a little bit to finding out a bit more about what other people seem to understand in a practical way maybe you know maybe it maybe it's not the thing that goes against whatever their preconceptions are um you know so so but in terms of in that in that moment of someone who's just leaping to inaccurate conclusions i don't know there's much you can do about that but if we go back to um the original question that I had from this uh, this this recent graduate of an instructor certification course someone coming along to a class who's skeptical probably isn't that person who's going to be leaping immediately to conclu conclusions 
um, they might jump to some conclusions. But, but this is someone who's taking the time to actually participate in a class. So that shows, hopefully, some honest curiosity at the very least. And from that, if they can have a good experience with the practice and come to understand even just a couple of tiny little things that lets them see the practical, the real nature of Qigong practice, that can then open them up to explore Qigong in a healthy way. So in general, I think most of the time if someone's a Qigong skeptic, but they, they come to, uh, you know, to honestly try a Qigong class, well, well that's probably healthy skepticism. Now, you know, <clears throat> you could also have someone who just wants to be, um, you know, who is prejudiced and just wants to be disruptive. Um, I suppose, uh, in my experience, I don't think I've ever had that happen. I have had students who've been disruptive, but I don't think I've ever had someone come to a class specifically with the intention of being disruptive. But I suppose that could happen. Um, it, you know, and, and in those situations, it, you know, it can be something where you have a have one of those tough conversations and say hey look if you don't want to be here other people do <laughs> you know let's how about we just let people in, enjoy what it is that they want to do um but yeah that's that's not common for someone to put the time in to actually want to join in participate in a class and learn about it so anyway hopefully some some useful thoughts for people who uh, may have encountered qigong skeptics and and maybe have even skeptics in your own family uh, or friends or things like that who maybe you have conversations with and um you know you're not quite sure how to approach it i i guess to recap um if it's just coming out of prejudice i don't know that you can do much about it often it's something to best to just leave just go well that that's fine think what you want you know um but people who have some honest skepticism which you know i think skepticism has an element of curiosity um well if they're willing to actually try some qigong you know that's a great opening point but even if they're not if there's an opportunity to to talk to them about some of the aspects of qigong and some some really practical ways that might be a way to for them to start to open up and change some of their perceptions about the practice of qigong if you would like a good starting point of well maybe a resource that you can point people to who you think uh you know who are honestly skeptical but curious um, and might like to learn more you could point them to the the introduction to qigong theory and practice course which we have at long white cloud qigong um, it's a free little mini course and it goes through a whole lot of just really basic things about qigong so it can help people to overcome some of those misconceptions or prejudices that they may have it goes over things like um you know the history of qigong where it came from you know some of those basic things what qigong means what qi is when people talk about qi uh, and then also some of the basics of how qigong works from a very practical point of view how we work with the mind the body and the breath how each of these factors works and comes together for us to work with our energy in a really practical way. So that's good for someone who's, who's skeptical. It's also good for someone who's not so skeptical, who's just doing Qigong and, um, and wants to understand their practice better. They do want to understand it in a practical way. Um, it's a really good resource for that. It can also, even if you know your friends or family members or whoever they are, um, you know they might not want to go all the way to doing a, a full course. It can also give you some really good um, information and ways to describe some basic aspects of qigong that you might describe to them, um, you know, in conversations that you have with them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Um, if you did, like, comment, subscribe, share, all those good things, and I look forward to seeing you on another one soon.